everyone today we will be discussing the second practical of dsa laboratory and in this we have to use chaining without and with replacement so for example i have shown here a table i have two fields in it one is the data field where i will be storing my keys and the second one is a chain field so uh, if i try inserting these particular numbers 22 will be inserted at second location 53 at third 34 at fourth location 72 and 82 will be linearly probed we will be using linear probing in our uh, practical so they will be linearly probed at fifth and sixth location but as you can see 22 72 and 82 should have belonged to the same bucket that is 2 but we only have one slot in this bucket so they are getting linearly probed so for that matter we have to chain them meaning we have to update their chain fields with the next uh, next elements location so for 22 the next similar bucket element is 72 which is at location 5 so we have updated its chain field as 5 and for 82 it is at location 6 so we will chain it with 72 its chain field will be 6 but beyond that we don't have any uh, elements inserted in our second bucket so for 82 it will remain as minus 1 and so on so now we'll try uh, looking at the implementation okay so uh, uh, for a hash table i am making use of a list and b is my table size and total will be the number of elements inserted in my table and for chaining i am going to be making use of a dictionary i'll tell you why later so to begin with we'll create our hash table first so for creating our hash table we need two fields for each and every uh, index in our bucket so uh, See, uh, first we'll have to take the table size as input from the user. For i in range number of buckets. Okay, for every bucket, that is for every bucket, I'll append to my table I'll append a list this way none and minus one so I'll basically have a two dimensional list like this for every index for every index in my table I'll have a two dimensional list like this because I need a chain field as well so this will serve as my data field this will serve as my chain field and yeah and I'll initialize my bucket I will initialize every bucket as minus one so why am, why am I using this bucket variable for uh, I will actually store each and every buckets current elements uh, index so I could chain them later so for example here for second bucket I'll store 6 okay because it is the latest inserted element from that bucket so if now I insert uh, 92 for example 92 I know that I have to <laughs> change the chain field of my sixth bucket okay I know that so for that matter I'm storing the latest ones latest indexes okay initially all of them will be minus one then whenever an element gets inserted i'll chain the previous element with the currently inserted element and i'll update that particular buckets index in my hash uh, sorry in my bucket variable now we'll also write a print table function so we could print our table at every go so oh yes uh, b should have been a global variable 
because we have declared it above Printing, we have to just print our table. So we'll just print table of i. We'll print it. And for making it look good, we'll add this line. So I'll have my table printed likewise. Okay, it will be separated by this symbol and to move on the next line I'll just add another print statement okay now for our main function that is the chaining function chaining insert we'll first write the logic of linear probing and then we'll just make some particular changes so that we'll chain uh, elements together so for linear probing we'll first calculate a hash value that would be key mod b okay and yeah we'll have to pass the key as parameter to our function then if this particular hash values uh, sorry if my table is empty at that particular hash value then I could insert or else I am linear probing linear probing for I in range 0 comma buckets minus 1 I am recalculating my hash value as key plus i mod b. And if my hash table is empty at this particular recalculated hash value, I'll insert and I'll break. I'll also use a flag variable to keep track whether my element is inserted or not and I'll yeah I'll have to I'll have to increment my total count as well number of elements actually inserted and a flag variable just to make sure that my element has been inserted and after that I'll check if my flag is equal to is equal to zero so my element is not inserted because when it is being inserted we are uh, incrementing the flag so when it is not inserted we could just print element not inserted key not inserted meaning table full okay now see our table has two fields first is the data field second one is the chain field so this will be at index 0 and this will be at index 1 so whatever I am inserting I will have to insert at the 0th field and I will also have to check at the 0th field and for that particular bucket I'll update that bucket's current index so bucket at what bucket at key mode beat bucket see because I, if I get uh, 22 as the value I'll store 22's index in the second bucket then I'll store 93's index at the third bucket 
ओके सो इट इज की मोड बीथ बकेट बकेट इज माई डिक्शनरी ओके आई विल बेसिकली स्टोर द करंट इंडेक्स विच इज बींग इंसर्टेड एट दैट पर्टिक्युलर बकेट लोकेशन एंड सिमिलरली फॉर दिस वन ऑल्सो आई विल डू द सेम थिंग सो एट bucket of key mod b l insert hash now we've uh, made uh, we we are keeping track of the currently inserted element but now we'll try chaining the elements so for that thing we'll for example see this is my bucket list i am storing each and every uh, buckets latest inserted element initially all will be minus 1 so for example till we get till here okay we've inserted 82 in our table so our second bucket's value will now be 6 okay and then i insert 92 so what i'll have to do uh, in my hash table at index 6 i'll have to update it as 7 okay the chain field so for that before uh, before actually setting my new bucket's value as 7 i'll have to update update the previous buckets chain field so the previous bucket was stored in stored at this rate six was stored in this bucket uh, in my bucket list and at that particular location in my table i am changing so at that particular location in my table i'll update it as hash okay the new index and then i'll overwrite the new hash in my bucket list so in this list 6 will be changed to 7 and there's also one issue over here if this comes out to be minus 1 okay table of minus 1 that would be a uh, like an incorrect logic so we'll also keep a check over here if this particular thing is not equal to minus 1 then we'll update it this way okay see because initially everything is minus 1 so we don't need to actually chain at that point okay because we will still we are still inserting table uh, we are still inserting elements in our table so at that particular point we don't have to chain when we get redundant bucket elements then only we will chain okay so this is a cha uh, chaining insert function without without replacement we'll first try running this function and then we'll build our search and delete functions and then in the next part of this video we'll be seeing chaining with replacement just a thing we'll have to that's fine Okay, now we we'll have to call our functions, and in this particular program as well, I'll make use of a menu card system. So I'll take certain choices as input. Enter. 
vector one to go to the table or zero for exiting if my choice is equal to is equal to one and if my choice is equal to is equal to zero i'll just print exiting and i'll bring okay now if my choice is one i'll ask the user to in uh, uh, to give me the input whether if to perform one for inserting two for searching three for deleting yeah we have to uh, we have to write these fun functions but first we'll just test our insert function and zero for going back then after this particular line we'll check if our choice 2 is equal to is equal to 1 then we'll just call our chaining insert function and we have to pass the key to it so we'll have to take a key as input from the user input enter the key to be inserted and elif tries to is equal to is equal to zero we are going back Yeah, and this particular thing should also go on in a loop. So while one and every time we'll also call our printable function. Before we break out. Table size ten insert twenty three. Okay, it is getting inserted, right? Just like a uh, normal module or division thing. Now we'll go for linear probing. Okay. Uh, there's just one mistake. I'll have to chain it over here. I should have updated the chain field. I'll correct this just a second. Okay, at this point we have to update the chain field. That is what I should have done. Okay, now it's working totally fine. Each time our chains are getting updated because we are storing the currently updated, okay, the currently inserted elements location. So for bucket three, my currently inserted element is 53, which is a location five. So my bucket list will contain five. Okay, five for bucket number three. So likewise for other buckets it will be minus 1 for now. We will also try inserting some other bucket elements. 22. Then let's say 72. Okay. 72 is chained to 22 at 6. It is working absolutely correct. Now we will just try implementing our search and delete functions using the insert function. For that I'll copy my insert function and we'll just make certain changes in this particular insert function. So 
for searching we have to neglect our bucket list okay we will just search uh, we will linear probe and then search and if we find uh, suppose uh, we have to search for 82 okay we will start from the zeroth bucket we will move to a bucket where uh, where that particular bucket's element uh, belongs to the same bucket as the as what is to be searched just a second okay so we'll start searching in our table and we'll go to the element which belong which should have belonged to the same bucket as that to be searched so 22 belongs to the same bucket as uh, 82 that is 2 so we'll stop our linear probed search over here then we'll go for chaining search so 22 is chained to the fifth location we'll go to the fifth location it is chained to the sixth location okay then we'll go to the sixth location and then we'll find our element so first we'll have to search using linear probing then when we find a similar bucket element then we'll go for searching using chained elements okay so for that I'll remove this total thing I'm not updating anything and over here instead of checking for none I'll directly check if it's my key I'll print that my key to be searched has been found key is found at location hash or else if it is not directly found I'll go for linear probed search I, I oh, okay yeah. over here we'll check if it is equal to equal to key we'll print a similar message in this case we don't need a total variable even we don't need to bring the bucket dictionary into picture we don't have to update anything but yeah we will we'll require this is not found we will require the flag variable if uh, to know that a particular element is not found now for searching we can't directly use a for loop like this we have to first search till the point we obtain a similar bucket element and then we have to chain search so for that matter i will declare my variable outside and i will use a while loop why while loop because i am testing for a condition till I obtain a similar bucket element similar bucket element meaning my table okay tables hash see table at hash of 0 mod buckets is equal to is equal to key mod buckets meaning they uh, they have the same modular value and they belong to the same bucket till that I will uh, go on probing or else I will break out and I will have to increment my i's value and I will also have to keep track of the chain field because whenever I obtain that particular uh, element which has the same bucket as the element to be searched I'll take its chain field and then I'll go for chain search. So after this, this uh, if condition, I'll go for chain search. So each time we probe linearly, I'll also update my chain variable as table of hashes first field okay 
and if I find my element I will just again update my chain as minus 1 because after that we don't need to go for chain searching only when if I don't find it readily using linear probing I will go for chain searching now this loop will work for the case where see where uh, suppose my key is 82 and um, this is uh, 22 they belong to the same bucket so I will obviously have to go for chain search so in that case my loop will not get executed so if my lo uh, loop doesn't get executed I will have to update my chain as table of hashes chain field see because there might be a case where directly we get that particular buckets element similar buckets element so this loop will not work so we will have to update the chain this way or else we could have updated it over here directly but that's fine okay we'll do it over here only okay then when our linear probe search is done okay then we'll go for chain search so for chain search we'll have to follow the chain go ahead go ahead go ahead so for chain search we have five five as our chain now we'll go to five okay then we'll check its chain field if it is minus one we'll stop it's not minus one so we'll go to the sixth element then we'll go to the seventh element and then it is minus one so we'll stop so while our chain is not minus one we could go on searching and we'll up each time update the chain as table of current chains chain field and before that we'll just check if our table at chains 0th field that is data field is equal to is equal to our key if it is we will print key found at location here the location will be chain because here we were linearly probing and here we are chain searching okay and then we could break And we could as well keep the flag as one okay and uh, yeah, we'll just you know write this statement below everything so that's it for the search function we'll try executing it search we will first search 22 that will be a direct search then we will search for 32 that will be a linear probe search till we get till 22 and when we get till 22 we will go for chain search 
okay three okay we'll search 62 as well 262 okay that is a change search now because this was chained over here then to the fourth location then to the sixth location okay so that's it for this video we'll uh, look have a look at the delete function in the next video because this video is getting a little bit lengthier so that's it thank you for watching this video